Greetings and welcome back everyone to From the Depths and to our little harm's defense turret. Now I need to continue working on this and one thing I would actually like to do is increase the rubber that I have around the bottom legs. I'm probably going to have to do a lot of work on the bottom honestly. It's not quite where I want it to be. Not by a long shot. Uh, let's swap the mirror line at this point. There we go. There we are, and there we go. Okay, that's fine. Now, out from the side, I would actually like um, the some sort of arms directly out along the, the middle, just to help with the situation where we might end up coming at the floor at a very odd angle. Ultimately, the, the whole point of the rubber is to protect it from any kind of collision, so... If I don't use it everywhere, then it can defeat the purpose. So the first thing we're going to do, go back to prefabs, find the curve. We're going to need to wipe it because we want it width to height one and length two this time. Thank you. Uh, let's orient it the way I'm facing at all times. So we've got one, two, three, four, five maybe. Mm. I need to make sure it's uh, quite far out. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I should have expected that would happen the moment I started recording. Ah, scallywaggery. Okay, let's uh, get the rest of this built out right here. There we are. I think that'll be good enough. What we could do, actually, thinking about it, is we could... Could grab the whole thing in one go. That would actually save a lot of time. Down one. Where's it cutting off? Oh, we don't want it to quite go that far. Lock that position for a moment so I can just have a look at how this connects. Actually, that's perfect. Okay, we'll take that. Right, down here I'm going to have to do just a little bit of work first as I need to replace these components. But then we can go back to using the prefab and save ourselves a lot of time. Prefabs are fantastic. You should use them at every opportunity. I do not because I am dumb, but I am trying to fix that little by little, bit by bit. And now because we've already changed all of those blocks from the other side using the mirror line, I don't need to worry about it now, so I'm just placing these kind of prongs and all will be well in the world, more or less. At least in my world, for the time being. There we go. Okay. Right. Just before I started recording, I caught some of the uh, messages in the comments. And one was to ask what I'm using the... Ooh, actually, is that going to come up too high? No, no, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll still work. Uh, what the purpose of the light blocks is. Well, the light blocks are simply going to be holding the top, because... I'm not going to be able to tell whether this is going to be landing on its feet or on its head. Now, the lead does give it a bit of a uh, an incentive to land face uh, with uh, in the right direction, but it's no guarantee, not even remotely a guarantee. So, I would rather build that out and have a similar sort of protection on the top than not. So. At this point, well, it's going to be a little bit of a pain, but I guess we could use prefabs and then just undo everything that we don't need. So, let's get this in position. Sunk down enough. Yep. Okay, wipe this. Now we're going to need a lot of range on that. Thinking, we'll go all the way out to 24, 5 on each side. And we'll do the same with the length. 25, then height... About there, I would say. Okay, let's grab you. This should be more or less right. Then all we need to do is rotate it all the way down. And then just zoom up. It would be easier if I lock its position, though. Now let's bring it up one more than that. Ultimately, kind of want it to be like this. So... Dunk. 
Now, presently that should be working okay. Can't be entirely certain though. It seems that something may have broken. I definitely noticed movement. Why did that break? The front and the back did not connect for some reason. That's peculiar to an extreme. Let me try and place it again because it should work this time. No. Hmm. Alright. Well, let's have a look why. Why are you breaking? What is breaking you? Ah, I see. It's probably that down here we have beams and up here we do not. So, the easiest way for me to fix that. Oh, dear. Did that break the entire thing? Ah, I had the mirror line down. Okay, well, now it should actually work. Oh, well. We got all the resources back, so in the end, it kind of worked out for us. Not really, but it kind of did. I'm not too happy with it, but oh well. Just need to get that overlaid, and this should work now. There we go, perfect. And now it'll pop the part off that shouldn't be there. All right, let's go back to box now. We've got some editing to do to make this work. First and foremost, we don't want the top and the bottom to be heavy, so... Uh, sorry, the, the top to be heavy, heavy. We do want the bottom to be heavy. Now, I could be kind of weird and use uh, alloy blocks up here instead to make it extra light, but I don't think we want to increase the cost of it, really. It's good enough to have one of these like this. So there we go. This should be very, very difficult now to damage in terms of collisions with the terrain. We also definitely want to remove all of this. We're going to be building metal on the top to store probably some ammo because we don't need another AI. That's uh, flat out not a need anymore. So we want to get rid of all of that. We don't need another weapon controller. We don't need any of these things that we've got up top. There we are. Now ammo. Ammo is good. We are going to need ammo. We're going to need a lot of ammo, actually. Um, well, everything should rotate okay down there. Down here, everything is rotating okay. Alright, so, up here we are going to do a few things. First and foremost, as I was mentioning, more ammo. But possibly this time, a little bit more aggressively. Uh, let's see, could we have a metal beam... Perhaps there's a possibility. We could place one then over here. Make it look kind of symmetrical in a, a sort of weird way. Not really, but I'll live with it. And then same over here. There we are. Then fill this up with barrels. Because this weapon system is going to have a, a fairly high ammo requirement, unfortunately. If I do a little bit of shaping... Because I can't not do a little bit of shaping. Alright. It'll never happen. There we go. There we are. Then I can uh, put in some corner sections as well, possibly. Mm. No, I think that's good enough. Also, we may as well just replace these components now so that they go straight into the, the uh, top section. Alright, so it's got a 5,000 odd ammo capacity. Meh, not too bad. I guess one thing I could do at the top as well is actually pop in some ammo processors. I think that actually works out quite well in a way. We'll definitely add in some controls. So, control terminal. No, no, no. Automated control block, rather. And we could bury these in down with the AI if we wanted to. And I think that might be okay. So, uh, let's see. We're going to have to have quite a lot of control blocks, though. Mm. No, we'll put them up here, since these ones are going to be directly controlling the ammo. So, as always, when ammo... Let's see. When ammo fraction is below 25%, then activate all of the ammo processors... And turn them on. 
Then down here. Oh, wait, ammo processors. Do they draw power? That may be true. I'm not sure about that one, though. I'm really not sure about that. They might not. I'll leave them on there just in case they don't, but uh, I may have to check that. But when it's above 50%, turn them off. There we go. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that ammo pro uh, processors may use power. Um, power, power, power. Does it say anything? Requires power from the engines. Drap, damn, and blast. Okay. Well, that makes things a little bit simpler in a way. Uh, we can't use them, so... That's a bit of a shame. They are... I do quite like having... Oops. Ammo processors just to top things up if it gets very low. Very well. I'm not going to put a small engine on this. That's flat out not happening. Right. The last bit that we need is just a couple of propellers. Now, as I was mentioning, the propellers on this should be kind of asymmetrical. So I'm going to put them in odd places. Um, there we go. There's one there. Uh, I don't want the mirror line for this. So one there. We'll put also one there. Actually, no, we'll put that one down here. And then I'm going to put two on this leg to give this one a little bit more force. Now this way, because there's two going to be forcing this part to spin at the bottom, only one forcing the top part to spin and one forcing that part up, it's going to make this quite erratic in the way that it moves. Very, very erratic, in fact. Um, and that's, that's literally exactly what I want. Now the reason for that is if we go to control, I'm going to be having automated control blocks and the way these will work is the first one, every input seconds, let's say every 10 seconds, no limit, all propulsion systems. Where are they going to be? Propulsion components, set drive fraction, zero. Basically, turn them all off. And then on this side, conversely, every input seconds. Now this one should be something like, hmm, how often? We want this to be around, let's say every minute or so, but we'll make it just slightly off, every 66 seconds, so just after uh, a pulse of the, uh, actually no, 61 seconds, just after a pulse of the shut down the engines process, we'll turn all of them on to full. Now that's going to take a little while for it to kick in, which is unfortunate. But uh, that should mean that every now and then this will just kind of bounce. The other thing that I want is actually a much more powerful propeller at the bottom. A huge boat propeller right down here. Now the reason why I've got these is so that when this thing kicks in, it's going to kind of bounce in the water. I'm probably going to have to put more propellers to get that kind of bouncing effect. But my idea is that this kind of needs to roll erratically, just moving around the ocean, never really stopping in one place for too long. Then we can just add in a couple of... Now we want the mirror line back at this point. No colour. Ideally, we want to use metal beams. I do apologise if you can kind of hear me snuffling a little bit. I've, I'm coming down with a bit of a cold. Alas, it's that time of the year. I don't begrudge it, though, because I actually like this time of the year much more than I like the other times of the year. But it does kind of suck to have a cold when you do YouTube. There we go. There we are. A little bit of shaping as well. Not a whole lot. Uh... I fear that the metal up there is not going to be enough to counterweight the amount of lead that I've got on. Actually, I'm telling a lie. Of course it's going to be enough. This is a huge amount of lead down here. Okay. And I'm back after the sudden sneeze. And while I was away, I suddenly realized something. Oh my lord. 
you're probably all sat there shaking your heads wondering how long it would take me to think of it. Yeah, well, don't worry. It didn't take me that long, or at least not as long as it usually takes me to realise things. Uh, and I'm not even going to say what I've just realised. I'm going to wait for it to dawn on you if you also hadn't realised. So I don't feel quite so alone in my derpissitude. I'm not sure if that's a word. In fact, I'm absolutely certain it's not, but it should be. It would apply to me quite a lot of the time. All right, there we go. Now, we may as well have those. Because we have to have an engine. Obviously, we do. Why would I have thought that we didn't? Ah, my lord. All right, there we go. How are my propellers going to work if I do not have an engine? That is the important question that we should all be asking ourselves right now. There we go. Dunk. So, the reason I'm doing this is because if I'm going to have these, I may as well uh, have them in a nice symmetrical pattern. Right, so this one, we'll set this one up as every input seconds to 100, uh, sorry, to uh, every 10 seconds. Propulsion component set drive action to zero. There we go. On this side, Every input seconds, every 61. Propulsion component set drive function to 1. Down here. If ammo fraction below 25%, then turn on all of the ammo processes. And finally, this one. If ammo fraction above 50%, then turn all of them off. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Yes, I feel suitably dumb. Trust me on this. There, there is a remarkable amount of dumb feeling going on. But I am going to put it down to the fact that I've got a cold and I'm trying so hard. I'm so incredibly conscious of any sniffling or tickling in my nose and etc. etc. That's what I'm going to blame it on. And you can't stop me. So, there. Right, we're going to need a little bit of storage down here. You know what? Let's pop. I don't want to make this too big. We need the fuel storage tank. I'll pop the fuel storage tank. Uh, get rid of the mirror line. Right about there. Done. So that's good enough for there. Up here I will have a fuel processor. Right here. So this can basically keep itself running, and then we'll build a very simple engine. Won't need to be much of anything. I'll still make it as, you know, a powerful one in terms of my ability to make engines, just because I don't see much of a reason not to really. Uh, we want there, 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 and there. It's going to be mostly the cylinders, though. A couple of fuel tanks and stuff like that, just to pull down the amount of consumption of fuel. But beyond that, we don't really need much. It's not meant to be a powerful engine at the end of the day. It's meant to just do its job. Currently, 28. That's not good enough. Not nearly. No, no, no. We want a supercharger up here. And there, we then want engine zone fuel tank, probably along here. How much power are we outputting now? 181, I have no idea how good that is. Then we're finally, actually we want to, uh, you know what, we may as well. We can just do this just for the sake of it. There we go. 265 power should be good enough. At this point, I really want to see the engine's pulse. Are you working? No. Hmm. Desired speed. Maybe I need a uh, ACB just constantly having the desired speed at maximum. 
Yes, actually that makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay. Learning to make a random motion turret with Avac. Very, very hodgepodgey way of doing things. I apologize for the fact that I am basically making most of this up as I'm going along. Right, so we just want uh, activate on sp while well, health is above something, or activate on spawning. Side speed. Water and air speed. Full. Good. Now, this should, I'm hoping, work. Are they running at all? Yeah, they are. Not really doing much, though. I think I need to set everything to main thruster. Main. Yeah, everything needs to be set on main, I, I fancy. Otherwise, it won't work properly. Right now, they're not all set to main. So that's resulting in only some of them firing. We need everything to turn on when it decides to speed up. I'm probably going to have to change some of these. There we go. But it's not really turning. Ah, there we are. Need you to do something. Oh, you're set to main. Mm. I fancy we're going to need some better propellers then. Alright. I mean, that kind of worked the way I wanted it to. It at least hopped up. So, let's replace a couple, all of the propellers with the larger versions. Am I using the right colour? I am now. So there we go, that should be a main. There we are. Also a main. I would like more of a focused burst of speed though, really. To be honest with you. The engine is struggling with this. That's fine. This can just kind of hop around for a little bit. The engine is pretty much running at its speed now. It doesn't want to run any faster than that. I could increase its power just slightly, but what's this cost? 22k metal already. No, I don't really want to make it any more expensive. I can't put full stops. Harm's turret. There we go. And we shall save this constructible. There we go. The Harm's turret is complete. Now, I'm thinking... I'll end up retrofitting one of my abayas to either just build these as it goes or have sub vehicle spawners so it builds three or four of them and carries them with it. When it goes out of play, they come with it. And then when it lo um, comes back into play, they just kind of get deployed around it. So it's, it's just deploying these stationary sinking turrets. I think that would be quite, quite nice. I will almost certainly shape it a little bit more, but uh, that will happen off camera at another stage. I'm pretty happy with that, but we're going to go ahead and see if we've got a fight going on. Maybe we can pull our harms into one. Uh, okay, well, the harms itself has no real speed. Well, it's got a speed of 3.6. We don't really want that, though. You know what? Let's use... Where are you? Over here. Let's scrap this. So Harm's turret. Go ahead. Scrap it. We've already got the blueprint. It's fine. Uh, destroy scrapped object. Yes. We'll build another one elsewhere. I want to see how fast one of these builds while in combat. That would actually be quite useful information for me. So, we'll test it out here. We've got a glaive... A buttress and a bastion. All right. Well, we've made our new turret. We can actually build it. So I'm going to have you engage from long distance. This means that my avatar is not going to get to uh, destroy you utterly too fast. Put 
you in position. The Abai is very important for this one. Sobek, you may as well stay out of this battle, but you're going to come with us. Sorry, another sneeze there. Right, okay. From this distance, we should be good. I will be on the Abai, and the moment this battle begins, I'm going to start telling the Abai to build a harms. Right, okay. Let's zoom down. Where am I? There we are. Let's go straight out. Abaya, I want to know how fast you can make one of these. Please begin making a harms turret. Right now. Come on, you've got a bajillion tentacles. You should be able to put this together really fast before our torpedoes launch and smack her in the face. I really do need to consider moving where it builds from. Health below 80% and sinking. What really? Sustained by repairs. That is so wonky. That really is incredibly wonky. Have you just launched a missile? <gasps> you are! You're launching your missiles! You're doing even better than the Abire is! That is fantastic! You launched them through the, the sky as well. I approve. Now we'll see how fast the harms refuels itself or, or rearms its weapons. How on earth are you building that limb when it's not attached to anything? That's wizardry, if you ask me. Complete and utter wizardry. Glorious to see those things being shot, though. What on earth is hitting you? Something big is hitting you. Wow, it's really is firing from that far away? That's actually kind of amazing. But I'm mostly interested. Why are you trying to dolphin dive a buyer? You're usually so good. There we go. You'll probably sink now that the uh, harms has been released. Harms, please don't get stuck. Harms, don't don't piggy bank on the abaya. Harms, you're being very naughty. Okay, we need to just dive. Dive, 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 dive. Okay, okay, reverse for now. Let's release the harms. Let it sink. There we go. That's what we needed to do. Right, okay, you're on your own. Also, everything should be ignoring salvage, not attacking it. My chances of capturing something will be greatly enhanced if we're not constantly trying to destroy everything if it, you know, even the smallest little block is still there. There we go. Harm's turret, you should be turned on. There we are. Not that it really matters for your AI for the most part. The harm's is, I believe that is the harm's turret there. And it is doing well. Look at its missile, its torpedoes go. Well done, Harms Turret. I approve of you. Right, let's uh, completely unhook my camera. There we are. Now let's get out there and see how the Harms Turret is doing. If this works well, then I will be re retrofitting one of the Abayas, um, possibly even the Abaya, to carry these along. I was originally going to have them doing something along the lines of the using the leeches, but uh, no, I'd, I'd be pretty happy to set it up like that. Wow, okay. Very nice design. Very nice design. How are you doing in terms of our torpedoes smacking into you there? More of them on the way? Yes, there's quite a lot of them on the way. And they're moving very fast as well. Well, they are kind of missing the mark. To be honest, they're not doing a huge amount of damage either. Uh, well, they are actually... Okay, I take it back. They are doing a lot of damage. They are doing it against metal, which I suppose is going to be difficult. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm pleased with the amount of damage that's being done. And you are literally just sinking due to all of the torpedoes that have been wrecked. How much damage has been done internally? Not too much, actually. It seems that uh, getting through the two or three layers of metal armor is difficult. But, we're probably... Yeah, we're starting to see some internal damage being dealt now. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. It's not killing it super fast. We may want to look at changing... Oh, look at the ricocheting shrapnel inside. May want to look at changing the payload of these torpedoes. But for the most part, they're doing well, at least against the uh, Onyx Watch, which has largely metal hulls. I'm fa fairly happy on the whole with this. Maybe swap out the EM, though, for explosive. Though that EM travels so gloriously. And with enough of them, the surge protectors will eventually get overwhelmed and be destroyed. So even if it's employing surge protectors to protect its AIs, 
really won't matter after a while. I'm just really, really pleased with the fire rate of the harms. I wasn't expecting it to be so well. I mean, these aren't all harms, obviously, but, uh, well, actually, no. They, they are. And I think these may be more harms as well. Oh, glorious. And, of course, the true setup is to have these being deployed, you know, dozens of them being made. Or at least ten, I suppose. Um, where's the Abaya? The Abaya's over here. That harms is doing really well, considering it's li it could not be hurt. From its this, from it that far away, nothing is going to engage it. So, uh, I'm actually pretty happy with that, on the whole. Okay, let's go and have a look. It is sinking. We have won this battle, handedly, I feel. I think the harms torpedoes could do with a payload change. Perhaps moving to explosive rather than EM. But I'm fairly happy with what it's doing. I do want it to have a little bit more destructive force for the size of the torpedoes. But one of the main things with this torpedo isn't so much that it hits hard. It's that it can do it from so far away. Vastly outranging most weapon systems. Okay, well, I'm happy with that. That is going to be the end of this episode. The harms is now complete. I will retrofit one of the abayas to be able to deploy them and then recover them so I'm not constantly having to build them. Or perhaps just having a, an auto scrapper so that uh, when it gets deployed, I can just rip it apart and, and recover the resources after the fact. I'll have a look into whether that's possible. Um, someone mentioned the idea previously and I wasn't really sure that there was a way to do that with an ACB but maybe there is. But that is all going to be for the next episode so I hope you've enjoyed this one and will be joining me for the next but until then and as always do take care.